Well, I've reached the top of Bodmin Moor, and um, what a lovely view it is up here too. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here I am in the accommodation that I have here for a few days. Well, there's the view. I love drawing sheep. Now, as you can see, that's the view. Well, here we go then. As I say, that's the scene. Um, lovely view. And uh, got my drawing down onto the watercolour paper, as you can see. Um, all I've got to do now, um, I've, I'm using a pencil sketch um, that I did on site yesterday. Uh, and now I'm going to paint the complete watercolour uh, onto water, 140 pound Canson, not watercolour paper. First thing I've done, thoroughly damped this a very large brush that I've got. Um, it's a Pro Art 45 um, number 8 in size. Um, lovely brush. I like Pro Art. Um, quite a few of my brushes are Pro Art. And I've thoroughly wetted it um, because I'm going to create a little bit of cloud work in the sky. I like to have a little bit of cloud work in the sky. Not too much in the distance there. And that's going to be fairly soft. So I've damped the paper with clean water. And what I'm going to use for the clouds? Well, actually, I'm going to try Payne's Grey. So I'm using some Payne's Grey here, um, which um, don't use often, but for cloud work, I find them, uh, I find it extremely useful. Soft on the underside, hard edged on the top, perhaps. And I'm twisting the brush and pulling the brush across the paper using the damp areas to indicate soft shapes. Don't want too many clouds, so I've got to watch. Uh, a little bit of cloud work there, and that can go out of picture. A little bit of cloud work there, not too much this side because I do have the sunlight coming from that side. One or two hard edges always works well. And then as we go away into the distance, the clouds become smaller, which is always a sign that you've got distant clouds. Now we're going to use a warm tone. I'm going to use light red for this, just to sneak in the tops of some of these clouds. There, like that. Not all of them, some of them, just to give a bit of warmth. There we are. And uh, then I'm going to use a little bit of raw sienna, just purely to paint in a little bit of light into, just to give it a little feeling of warmth into some of these clouds. And then, of course, along the distance will be some more. You have to excuse the farm machinery. Along the distance, I'm using more raw sienna. Like that. And right in the distance, a little alizarin is going in. Because I can see a little bit of bright light there in the distance. And that is going to be my cloud for today. Just before that dries, I'm going to paint in a fairly dark, see the way I'm trying to get that to soften on the top, which it's doing, a fairly dark area of distant land. And that's the far distant fields, or hills really. I want it to soften. 
don't want it to grow up too much. Here we are, may need to do a bit more to that. And to make certain that it's lighter in the lower area, I'm just lifting off in that dark area there. And that'll just run there. And just so it doesn't grow up too much, out of control, I'm just going to lift off an area there, just to try and pick up that. See the way I soften that and gives it a lovely blurred effect. Then as we come forward, I can see some lovely warm yellows, yellow greens. So for this, I'm going to use cadmium yellow with a touch of cobalt blue in there. It's quite a brilliant yellow, uh, quite a brilliant sort of colour. Actually, it's a little too green for that. There we go, that's, that's all right. That'll, that'll seem to work. Uh, that's all trees, so that'll blend away. Um, that's perfect. Pull that right the way across, I'll go right behind there and then I'll soften that. So, because that's where the trees will be. Here we are. Now I'm just putting a, a little bit more cadmium in from the more foreground area there. And that will continue. That's the, more or less the green that I can see. So that sort of green will then continue here for the more foreground field. Here's some hedging that will split that up like that that's good and then the real foreground field I'm going to use lemon yellow or cadmium lemon as my main colour for a swipe of that colour there like that a bit more yellow now I've got to remember to paint over, around the sheep so cadmium yellow again nice lemon cadmium lemon nice lemon yellow for this foreground now I introduce a bit of blue to that for start off it's cobalt blue so that is um, I've got to remember to paint around those sheep A bit more cobalt, now a bit of cadmium gone in. Cadmium yellow, and if you notice, I'm creating a quite a considerably darker green because I want that as I come forward. Paint around the sheep initially, like that, before I paint them in in their rightful shapes. But that's how that goes. This is why I'm using a large brush, because you need a large brush to, c to continue with these washes. Because if you don't, you end up with hard edges. Notice how it's all soft. And that is something that I've learned that I couldn't quite get years ago. Couldn't quite get the fact that how these artists produced clean, soft washes of colour and that's it really that's all you do and in the foreground I'm putting Prussian blue with that because that will give me an even stronger green but don't just put bands of it break it up into the rest of the landscape and then right in the foreground plenty of blue plenty of cadmium yellow and there you go look at that I love that. I love a lot of artists won't use Windsor blue or Prussian blue, but I love it. And then I'm putting in a little bit of light red here and there if I can pick up light red. Like that. Because reds and yellows, sorry, reds and greens always work well. And we've got some lovely little tufts of grass within this landscape that I'm just showing like that. A bit more red for a dark tuft of grass there. 
one or two little tufts there a little bit more Prussian blue just to finish that down in this bottom right hand corner and that oh little tufts of grass there see it not too many in the distance don't too many darker grasses in the distance and that is the start of this lovely painting well this is our view from the uh, small barn cottage and as you can see in front of us we've got a perfect view uh, of the sheep and the sun as it sets over the trees now the greens for the trees well we've got a hint of autumn now which means yellows and reds browns so really to start this off i'm going to put in a rather dull looking hedging a nice more or less a formal hedge there like that so this is the start of um, this area and I've just changed brush to a slightly smaller mop um, but I think that will benefit you watch how I'm painting these I'm leaving gaps because I want that fencing to be slightly darker sorry the background and the fencing to be slightly lighter so that's the idea of it the brush doesn't point particularly well as you can see so that's that now we've got coming up the back here we've got some lovely bit of hedging that stands up and if I just pull that down like that oh that, that's nice I've got a little bit of blue there I don't know where that come from but it's a welcome um, it's a welcome sight in that particular area look at that put some brown with that shall I just to give them that autumn feel there we go just before it dries and that finishes there like that right while I've got that brown and a little bit of yellow a bit of bit of blue with it but not a lot and not too much on the brush because I'm going to now paint this large tree and this is where bit more brown yeah this is where the shaping of the brush and actually holding of the brush the the, the actual um, shaping of the of the head of the brush comes in there we are look at that lovely lovely sort of feeling that autumn is on its way right that's good and that hangs there while that's still damp I'm going to put brown and Prussian with that because I want to create the shadow side that is quite dark before it dries really or at least to start off that dark shadow side it's a little bit there a little bit there and the overhang there into a lighter area one or two little touches there and then of course we go down um, into what is in effect a trunk area so we're going to have to be very dark with this a bit more blue a bit more brown in there so that's the lovely thick trunk that supports that I like that yeah I don't mind that at all um, that's that uh, area in it's got to lift off a couple of splotches one there and one there could be the head of the but there you go and that's the start of the trees next I'm going to paint in the large tree and look I've got very little on the brush there see the way that I'm trying to depict a slightly different sort of tree similar colors there we are brilliant and then we've got the overhang here 
something like that. Lovely old oak, I believe, but that's something that we shall have to depict shortly. Now, as I add more water, more blue, more yellow, and a bit more brown, a bit more yellow in that. Let's see if we can pick up. This needs to be dark brown, really, for the time of year. I want to be darker. See the way I'm slowly introducing darker colour. And of course, if I'm darker than that tree, I've got to pick around that and into that to create the shape. And that's precisely what I'm doing. And some darker little, you know, a brush never shapes up perfectly, not even for an art, um, a professional artist. Um, that needs some attention and uh, that's what you have to do I'm afraid um, you know you know this business of every artist can do it you know just because you're an artist you can do it well not quite as it is really um, even an artist that's had you know, I've had a lot of experience, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to get the brush to, to point up exactly how you want it. There you go. And that, with a little bit more blue, a little bit more brown, just to get some... So we've got a three-dimensional feel, or two-dimensional, if you like. And let the paint do its own thing. Don't be tempted to overpaint certain areas. There we go. Can always go a little bit darker later. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put the trunk in. So that's burnt sienna with Windsor Blue. And that is a very, very dark, or fairly dark, Colour, yes, yeah, they are dark compared to the background. I'm trying to do it with this brush that doesn't point very well. So, um, oh, there's there's a lovely trunk there, and I'll put in some finer. There we go, and there's one there too. Nice to show a little bit of the distance in the background. Um, a nice bit of depth under those trees, always a good thing. And that, oh, let's just mop in that. We've got some color on the palette, there we go. Let's just pop in that tree, that hedging there. Run that right the way down, like that. Not too much in the lower area, there we go. Just take that away and allow those trees to run into that. Always a good thing to do. It's certainly going to get too much there. There you go. And now a bit more yellow, a bit more brown, a little bit of blue in that because I want this to show there again a bit more of that autumn feel. And it also throws that towards us, that bit of brown in there, leaving that yellow hedging feel on top. Like that and then of course we go very dark again more Windsor and more um, burnt sienna because this is very dark there we go and that runs along the base of that hedging and just on the edge there like that so it's darker than the background oh that's nice a little bit of that fencing running in there. There we go. Good old. And of course that's going to be shadowed by the by the tree. So we there, there we are. That will be shadowed of course. So we're going to be dark under there. Dark under there. That's going to be dark. It's going to be dark there. But of course there is plenty of light within that as well. 
going to be dark there as well for some unknown reason. Don't know why, but there you go. That's what I'm going to do. And then that more or less finishes somewhere there. And the rest is in the background. There we are. So that's the right hand side trees all sorted. Well, there's the scene in hand. Sheep are to order. And that's the stage of the painting so far. It's coming along very nicely. Now the next stage will be the trees that are behind this area there. So it's the trees behind this tree, like that. And they have a form and a shape, of course. But of course, they then blend nicely with that there. And then they go into the valley like that and then up there like that that's it now don't know quite whether I need too much to done to that uh, to be quite honest there is a darker area let's have one dark area within that then uh, and this is similar mixes to what we've had before there we are take that right down into the valley there meet up with that and it will come up uh, considerably uh, lighter once it dries and then we'll just pick up some dark stuff within that keep that nice and clean there that's it uh, and then we come forward to some more trees so I've just got to really balance the greens really it's just getting a mix of brown greens and uh, varying, varying tones of them you know, um, because that's a wooded area there, and that is in front of that, but it doesn't really matter if we, we don't depict that, but as long as we depict a nice line on the edge there, that's what I want to do, because it is quite a clean, You've got to remember these sheep have um, been um, grazing here for some time so consequently um, uh, the land is quite um, quite good actually and just holding in that side is another tree which is there like that and lo and behold the farmer has just come to round up whether you can see him in the distance just gone down there He's come to round up the sheep. Um, I'll try and capture him if he heads this way. Notice how the sheep are all looking. They know. They know they're due to be moved, I would imagine. Unless he's going to put more sheep into this area, I'm not sure. But I think they've got the idea, actually. Anyway, I must paint on here. Um, because time is running out. Regarding uh, the time I've got, really, here. Um, Right, now just added a bit more brown to that to create a brown tree within that. There. And that rings the changes. That's about all it does. Brilliant, so that's the cluster of trees. Now I'm gonna use the rigger. And I've gone back to my very dark cobalt again because I want to pick up the, the trees these lovely old trees that overhang and we'll put them in if we can into this dark, try and depict those as best we can and we're also going to put the trunk in, that's why I'm using the, the rigger because the trunks on these are um, very, um, very thin and then while I've got this rigger I'm going to sweep across a hedging that runs up in the distance like that and all of a sudden you've revealed the field I'm adding a little bit of yellow to that now just not too much just to run in a hedge and some trees so let's run in the hedge first hedges always are straight along the bottom anyway right they can be rather uneven at the top like that and that crosses that actual fact and comes into there and then we have trees 
standing up in that hedging. Particularly there, funny enough we don't, but I'm putting them in because I want it to hold in that, um, that feeling that, uh, um, that we don't want the eye to run out of picture at that point. Brilliant. That's the distance, basically. As you can see, all of the sheep have uh, clustered together. Um, they've not been rounded up yet, but whether they will be or not, I'm not sure. There's the scene, and this is the progress so far. Coming along quite nicely, actually. Now I'm going to paint the uh, sheep in with raw sienna. It wants to be very weak actually. I don't think it's quite weak enough. There we are. That's probably got it. Very weak raw sienna. Like that. A little bit there, a little bit there. These I want really dark. So, um, sorry, uh, really light. Not too worried about these being a little darker. We don't want those to attract the eye too much. So that's the sheep put in. I'd like to allow that to dry. But on the underside of the sheep, I always use burnt umber, just with a little bit of blue in there, just to darken it. Because as that bleeds up then into that, it gives a darker underbelly sort of touch that I quite like to see. Um, here we are. You begin to get a feeling of rounded shape then. Just soften that. See the way I've got that feeling of a rounded sort of shape by putting that darker area. Look at that. Isn't that, uh, yeah, I like the look of that. Now, just finishing touches. I've got to allow those to dry first. Um, now I'm putting in some real dark stuff. So I'm using burnt umber now with my Prussian blue. Um, in actual fact, I'm going to use Prussian blue and Indian red. That's what I'm going to use. Because that will give me a really dark green. There we are, Prussian blue and Indian red. And we shape up the fencing on the shadow side. Like that, like that. And the underside of the light areas where the light is catching those parts of the fencing like that one or two little touches here but of course then the fencing goes in to that darker area so they're dark like that and then we have a couple of cross sections there just paint them in very, very slowly. Uh, sorry, very, very quickly. Try not to depict the, try not to be too, a nice bit of crispness, that's what we're looking for. Let's soften that on the corner there, there we go. Um, lovely. That, uh, that depicts that quite well. Yes, I'm happy with that. Don't want that, but there you go. Um, now, the same colour is then used to darken the right-hand side of that, or that area there, of the trunk. There, like that. And then we can put in... Um, now, there is one dark... Ah, that one's really dark. So I'm going to paint that in very, very dark. Uh, so is that one, this, this trunk area I'm talking about. Um, that one is dark there, like that. So that's really give them a punch. Don't want any light there, so take that right up into, into that there. And now we have a sense of branches hanging out and going up, like that, there we are, and then we can see the odd branch here and there, 
just beginning to show through uh, in places. I don't want to spoil the fresh look of the whole picture or the uh, tree work. Um, and of course some of these hang down as well. Branches not only go up, they also hang down on the outside edges like that. There we are. This one, can't really see too much of that. Now we've got to punctuate this with some dark stuff. So here we go, a bit more red in this now to give us that dark punch there and where it really hangs under that tree and that tree can have it as well. There we are, just where that tree is there. There we go. And of course underneath there, where that tree is. Like that. And then, that then goes right down into that valley. And Right, we're going to leave that nice and soft, give it depth. That's the thing that gives it depth, that dark area running down into that valley. Can you see we've got depth underneath that tree? Vital that is. Right, now I'm using burnt umber now into that because I'm put, going to put the black faces on the sheep. Um, I always love doing this. Don't know whether it actually works for me, but and a couple of ears on that one uh, it's black face there a little bit angular face you know a couple of ears there perhaps um, and these have got the black legs too which is something that i find extremely useful with these sheep um, not sure of the breed that one hasn't, so I'm not putting that in. That's the way you do sheep. Um, not difficult. Whether all of them look like sheep or whether they're any other animal um, will remain uh, whatever you um, feel, but there you go. Um, that's sheep to me. Uh, let's see what we've now got. We're going to go in really dark now with final little touches. And that is for the side of that tree there. Two little touches there like that. And then just smudge them with the finger. Got to be darken the underside there because that's where the darker areas of this tree would be and as I say if they come up a little bit light smudge them in and pull them down too it's always a better result if you, if you use downward brush strokes and just spread them across look at that I think that depicts that tree particularly well um, and then this one too, a bit more blue in this one, not too much, because that's going to be even darker there. And just use a little bit of license here, you know. It doesn't actually look like as dark as that, but, well, it does, but it doesn't look that shape. But I think that brings it out particularly well. And then just a little bit of softness here. Just dragging across the, the paper. There we are. There we go. So that immediately brings light behind those trees. Always a good thing to do. Need to put a little bit of punch along the top of this because there is some there. Trees there. That's it. And see how that burnt sienna shines through. Um, now we do have a tree here and I'm going to put that in 
it's actually not as close as that but it is there because I want something to hold that in go that just holds that right hand side in um, what else have we got blue and yellow again because I'm going to put in some of these this darker area here some of these little tufts of grasses that that we can see just soften the base of them as well just use the finger if you need um, just to pull that across these this one's going out of picture there like that and just soften that across play with it with your finger just to give texture it just holds in that right hand side um, that's brilliant finally we're virtually there I think but we don't know until we've overdone it <laughs> which is uh, a, quite an easy thing to do unfortunately um, um, my past experience tells me that, that I think it's time um, to actually stop and finally put in some last little shadows well there you have the scene just got to go in with the last little shadows now and uh, that's going to be done with Prussian blue so clean the brush Prussian blue put that right up the end there out the way where we haven't got any other color in and Indian red but this time it's going to be uh, more blue than red whereas before it was quite red uh, well quite dark as well but this is going to be a bit more subtle um, and finally you put some little touches of that there you put some little touches of that there and just clean that away where that hedge is that's good and that may very well run across like that yeah yeah that, that's that's fine um, right not too many shadows required really a little bit under the sheep for obvious reasons a bit under there and just pull them away like that there we are just depicts the head brilliant now how do we bring life to this subject well, let me show you what we do we add Indian red with a bit more red in there and Windsor blue now what we do we take the ball by the horns and we just paint in that there like that and we sweep that across there like that and with the other brush just damped we just pull that out like that so that's our foreground shadow created by the cloud then we have another shadow that sweeps across here and the best part of this is that you can use that to just tap the screen there there we go you can use that to cast across part of that sheep like that and then we soften it again because if it's cloud shadow we've got soft edges so we have to keep these edges soft now where else are we going to have a little bit of weaker shadow now that would may run up the valley there like that and don't forget to soften it this is where you get the effect of of sunlight that's drawn in towards those trees now basically 
just watch you don't overdo that. Here we are. So basically, all we've got to do now is two birds in the sky, maybe three. Oh, what a, hang on. Just, just before, just before we finish, I'm darkening off that tree and I'll put some shadow in there like that. Because that, that leaves a lovely little caveat, a little area for that, that hedging. There we are. See how it's lit up part of that. I think that's a good feature, something that is required. Now I've just seen um, a peregrine, no, it would pro probably be a buzzard actually, flying around. So I'm going to put that in here. Well, that's my version of a buzzard anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. And we're gonna have some smaller um, birds in the sky here that are dodging around the top of this tree like that. Crows possibly. Um, I think we ought to take the surround away and see what we've got. Um, lovely composition. Uh, sheep obviously um, made a big difference to the composition. They're no longer in the field. Well, they're just going back, um, but um, Although we've had a, uh, um, a sit on mower in the background for most of this um, video, I hope you've enjoyed watching. And um, if you have, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, Colin Steed Art, uh, Colin Steed Artist on YouTube. Um, the link at the bottom right hand corner, if you click on that, you subscribe, you'll get notifications when I upload more videos. Um, and uh, it won't be long before I'll have another painting here from this lovely area of Cornwall. Thank you very much for watching.